are you, boys? Ready to go over that story on overdrive electrical controls with me? That they are, Tech. They've been waiting for you to show up. Well, glad to hear I'm popular. Why don't you give them the story, Lee? Glad to, Tech. Remember last month we said that the control pawl had to be engaged in the sun gear control plate before we could operate in overdrive? Right, Lee. And that pawl is engaged and disengaged by the action of the solenoid, which is operated electrically when the car reaches a certain speed. There are actually three circuits in the overdrive electrical system which affect the operation of this solenoid. The solenoid circuit, the control circuit, and the ignition interruption circuit. Let's cover that solenoid circuit first, Lee. Good. Suppose we start out very simply and build up the circuits to show you just what the different units do and what they're in the circuit for. In order for this solenoid to operate electrically, we need a source of electricity, which of course is the battery. So we get electricity from the battery to operate the solenoid. Now, let's put a switch in the circuit to control the flow of this electricity from the battery to the solenoid so we can turn it on and off. We do this by putting a set of contact points in this solenoid circuit. And the solenoid circuit is that simple. Electricity comes from the battery and passes through the contact points to the solenoid. Tech's right. Now, in order to open and close these contact points, we need another circuit. And that circuit is called the control circuit because it controls the solenoid circuit. Controls it, huh? How does it do that, Lee? By the use of an electromagnet, Jim, to close the contact points. This electromagnet, which is in the control circuit, also receives its current from the battery. How are you going to complete the circuit through the electromagnet so the solenoid will operate at the right car speed? That's where the governor comes into the picture, Mac. This governor is regulated by car speed. When the car reaches a certain speed, the governor points are closed, allowing electricity to flow through them to ground. That completes the circuit through the electromagnet. Why don't you put the contact points and the electromagnet into one unit on your drawing, Lee? Just did it, Tech. They make up the overdrive relay. Then there are only the battery, the relay, and the governor in this control circuit, right? No, Jim. There are actually two more units. The kick-down switch and the rail lockout switch. Let's put them in our diagram. The kick-down switch serves as a connection through its A terminals in normal driving. It has another purpose, but we'll cover that later on. The rail lockout switch is a manually operated switch for making and breaking the control circuit. When the control handle is in, the contacts on the switch are bridged and current passes through the switch. But when that control handle is pulled out, the switch contacts are opened and current cannot pass through the control circuit. And when that happens, your overdrive unit is cut out. And that's your control circuit. Current comes from the battery and goes through the relay the kick-down switch, the rail lockout switch, and through the governor points to ground, completing the control circuit. You mentioned ignition interruption circuit, Lee. Just where does that fit into the picture? I was just getting ready to cover that, Jim. This ignition interruption switch, isn't it used when you want to get out of overdrive and into direct drive in a hurry, say, when you're passing another car? Right, Mac. When the driver presses the accelerator past the wide open throttle position, a switch plunger operated by the throttle linkage breaks the control circuit at the A contacts in a kickdown switch. That must de-energize the electromagnet in the relay, breaking the solenoid circuit too. That does it, Mac. But another action must take place before the shift from overdrive to direct drive is completed. Know what that is? Mm, yeah, I believe I do. Ignition has to be interrupted so that engine torque is relieved, right? That's it, Mac. Remember, we said that when the accelerator was pressed past the wide open throttle position, that the control circuit was broken across the A terminals. Well, when the control circuit is broken across the A terminals, a bar moves over and makes contact across the B terminals in this kickdown switch. Now, with these B contacts bridged, current flows from the battery through the ignition coil and from there through the kickdown switch to ground in the solenoid. And this action causes engine ignition to be interrupted for a few explosions. We 
which means that engine torque is relieved and the pawl is pulled out of the sun gear control plate. Right, Tech. In other words, the kick-down switch is another means of controlling the action of a solenoid. Correct, my boy. Now, why don't you give them a quick review of these three circuits, Lee? Good idea, Tech. But first, before I do that, let's revise our circuit a little. Instead of taking electricity direct from the battery, we can take it from the horn relay on the dash panel. A good idea, Lee. It's easier to connect wires to the relay than to the battery, and serves the same purpose. Okay, now let's take another look at the solenoid circuit. Current comes from the battery terminal of the horn relay, passes through the contact points, and goes from there to ground in the solenoid. The control circuit gets its current from the ignition terminal of the horn relay, goes from there through the electromagnet, the A contacts of the kickdown switch, and the rail lockout switch to ground in the governor. Just a minute, Lee. Why from the ignition terminal, but not the battery terminal? Well, don't tell me there's something I know that Mac doesn't. We take this current from the ignition terminal so that we can get this current into the control circuit when the ignition key is turned on. Right? Right, Jim. Know why? Yeah, I believe I do. That's to eliminate the chance of a leakage of current due to a ground in the circuit. Okay, okay, I concede. I hang my head in shame. And <laughs> that boy Jim is on the beam today, eh? Now let's look at the ignition interruption circuit. It starts at the ignition coil and passes through the B contacts of the kickdown switch to ground in the solenoid. And now you're ready to explain to the boys just how each one of these units operate. Right, Lee? That I am, Tech. Suppose we take the units in the control circuit and look at them first. Remember we said that we got our current from the ignition terminal of a horn relay. From there, it flows through the kickdown switch and the rail lockout switch to the governor. Now, let's take a better look at this governor. Actually, it's nothing more than an automatic switch used to make and break the control circuit according to car speed. When car speed is somewhere between 24 and 27 miles per hour, the centrifugal force of the weights cause the tip of the governor shaft to move away from the contact plate. The action allows the governor points to close, completing the control circuit through these points to ground. And with the control circuit completed, the electromagnet is energized, closing the contact points and completing the solenoid circuit. That's right, Tech. So with these contact points closed, we move right into the solenoid circuit and see just how its units operate. Remember, we said that current for the solenoid circuit comes from the battery through the battery terminal of the horn relay. From the horn relay, current passes through the 20 amp fuse in the side of the overdrive relay and across the closed contact points. Now, from these contact points, current flows to the number four terminal of the solenoid, and from there to ground inside the solenoid. Inside the solenoid, there are two coils, the closing coil and the holding coil. Electricity passing through these coils causes them to be energized, loading the paw rod and spring and moving the paw against the balk ring. And we need a heavy initial current to overcome the action of the return spring so current flows through both coils to do the job. Right, Tech. But after this initial boost to overcome the action of the return spring, the closing coil points are open. When these points open, current passes through the holding coil only. This holding coil, which draws very little current, holds the pawl in place against the action of the return spring. And this holding coil holds the pawl against the balk ring until engine torque is relieved. Hold it right there. Somebody better turn this record so we can hear what happens when torque is relieved. What happens when torque is relieved, Lee? When torque is relieved, the balk ring moves out of the way and allows the pawl to enter one of the notches in the sun gear control plate. And so you can see that the control circuit through the electromagnet in the relay actually does control the solenoid circuit 
by making and breaking this circuit through the contact points in the overdrive relay. Right, Tech. Now let's show them how the units in the ignition interruption circuit work. Remember we said that this ignition interruption circuit is used when you want to get out of overdrive and into direct drive in a hurry. When the driver presses the accelerator past the wide open throttle position, the switch plunger operated by the throttle linkage breaks the control circuit at the A contacts in the kickdown switch. That means that the solenoid is de-energized. Right, Mac. As these A contacts are broken, the switch plunger moves a bridge from these A contacts to the B contacts in the switch. However, another action must take place before the shift from overdrive to direct drive is completed. Ignition interruption? Right. Ignition must be interrupted so that engine torque can be relieved. Remember, with the solenoid circuit broken, you have cut out the holding coil. Therefore, the only thing holding that pawl in the control plate is friction between the control plate and the pawl, caused by engine torque. So we have to relieve this torque so that the pawl can be withdrawn. We do this by interrupting engine ignition for an instant. How's this done, Lee? The action starts right inside the kickdown switch, Jim. When those B contacts are bridged, current flows from the ignition coil across these B terminals in the kickdown switch to ground in the solenoid. And that action interrupts engine ignition. Well, how is this engine ignition reestablished, Lee? Suppose we take a look at this solenoid, Jim, and see just what takes place during this ignition interruption. As torque is relieved, the pawl is pulled out of the sun gear control plate by the action of the return spring. The pawl rod pushes against a contact spring at the end of the solenoid. Right, Tech. This contact spring has one of the ignition ground points. So when the pawl rod pushes against this spring, the ground points are open. When the points open, the circuit to ground is broken, so ignition current is restored to the engine. That's it, Tech. And when you let up on the accelerator slightly, the bridge in the kickdown switch returns to the A contacts. And when that happens, you restore the control circuit. You are still in direct drive, but you're ready to go back into overdrive when you take your foot off the accelerator. Right, Tech. And that's the story on the three overdrive circuits and their electrical units. Say, Lee, what are some of the conditions that can affect the operation of this overdrive unit? That's a good question, Mac. Actually, there are four conditions you might have to contend with. These are a unit that won't shift into overdrive, one that won't shift out of overdrive. You also might have a unit that will not kick down at speeds above the overdrive cut-in speed. Or a condition where the engine stalls during kickdown. But let's get one thing straight. A lot of electrical conditions are caused by loose or corroded connections. So before you start any electrical checks, be sure all connections are clean and tight. A good point, Tech. Say, Lee, are there any general deductions I can make if, say, the unit won't go into overdrive? Yes, there are, Jim. Usually, if the unit won't go into overdrive, there's an open circuit or a short in the electrical system. And if it won't come out of overdrive, you've probably got a grounded circuit that should be open. Hold it right there, Lee. Let me see if I'm straight on just what the difference is between an open circuit and a short in the circuit. A short is actually an unwanted ground, like when a bare wire touches the frame, right? That's right, Jim. And an open circuit, well, that's where the circuit is broken. Is that right? Right, Jim. Now that we've got that straight, let's find out just what can happen to keep an overdrive unit from operating as it should. A good idea, Tech. We won't have time for details, but we'll give the boys an overall look at overdrive troubleshooting. Let's start the ball rolling with a unit that won't go into overdrive. That condition could be caused by an incomplete solenoid circuit, an incomplete control circuit, or some mechanical difficulty. And that incomplete solenoid circuit can mean a blown fuse, loose or broken wires, or a bad connection. Right, Tech. And an incomplete control circuit could be caused by a loose or broken wire, or a bad connection. You mentioned mechanical conditions, Lee. Couldn't that cause the overdrive to not work at any time? Yes, it could, Jim. And at this time, we'll just cover the electrical conditions. 
Remembering, however, that mechanical difficulties are a possibility, too. Well, what about a unit that won't come out of overdrive, Lee? That condition could be caused by a ground in the control circuit, sticking points in the relay, or a mechanical difficulty. A ground in the control circuit would mean that your solenoid was always energized. Right, Tech. And sticking points in the relay would have the same effect. The mechanical condition could be caused by the pawl being off the pawl rod or a broken return spring in the solenoid so the pawl was not being pulled out of engagement with the control plate. Another condition that you might find would be where the overdrive unit will not kick down at speeds above the overdrive cut-in speed. What would cause that, Lee? Well, it might be that the kick-down switch has moved out of position or that the ignition interruption circuit is incomplete. Or, as we said before, it might be mechanical in nature. If the kick-down switch is out of position, the plunger cannot close the B contacts in the switch to cause ignition interruption. Right, Tech. Now, an ignition interruption circuit, which is not complete, would mean that there might be a broken wire or a loose connection in that circuit. That leaves you with a condition where an engine stalls during kickdown. When an engine stalls during kickdown, it usually means that the ignition interruption circuit is not being broken. Not being broken, huh? How could that cause an engine to stall, Lee? You remember we said that the ignition ground points in the solenoid were open to re-establish the ignition. Well, if something happens to keep this ground circuit from being broken, ignition is not re-established. And that might be caused by the fiber block at the top of the paw rod being missing. If that block wasn't there, you'd still have a ground through the paw rod, even with the points open. That you would, Tech. You know, Lee, this outfit of yours is really sharp. So when I get out of here, I'll bet they'll all grab test lights and start right in making checks. That's the only way to do it. You can learn more in 15 minutes on the job than you can in a couple of hours of gabbing. The more you learn about this overdrive unit, or any other unit, the better you're going to be able to prove to the car owner that you know your business. And remember, everybody likes to do business with an expert. Come back and see us, Tech. I'll be back before you know it, my boy. So long.